Stuart, it's uh, been a while since we spoke to you on YouTube. Um, first of all, how are you? Yeah, very good. Good, thanks for asking. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, let's start by talking about the season so far. Obviously, it's been a good season for the majority of it. We've had a little bit of a blip in, in recent weeks, but what's your mood overall on the season? Yeah, I think it's, it's probably been better than expected. You know, if, if you look at um, the teams who came down with us, Watford and Bournemouth, who are probably the ones that we can judge ourselves against because we had the same circumstances, you know, obviously going for a, for a relegation. Um, I think we've done we've done we've done well. I think if someone would have said to us with 18 games to go, we'd be in the position we are in terms of the amount of points we've got. I think we all would have would have taken that. We're almost at sort of two points a game, which is what gets you in general automatically promoted. So we've put ourselves in a in a really good place. I think credit to to Daniel and the staff and all of the players on you know, how they reacted to a you know a real difficult time at the end of last season with obviously the bad results and then obviously the relegation and a quick turnaround. We didn't have a normal pre-season, uh, which obviously is the same for everybody, of course. But, you know, how we've reacted to that, um, I think we should be, you know, really proud of that. And, you know, we've built ourselves a really good platform to, to hopefully go and uh, finish the job off. And you and Daniel always come across very level-headed. Uh, as fans, it can be easy to get carried away with a win and, and likewise with a defeat. Uh, how important is it for us to try and, you know, stay calm and let the dust settle and and remember the bigger picture, I suppose. Yeah, of course. I think for for fans, it's right. The fans are there to dream. That's why you're a football fan. You know, a football fan shouldn't probably be um, worrying about the day-to-day -day reality. Um, but absolutely, uh, it's mine and, and Daniel's job and everyone else so, sort of associated with the club, really, to, to sort of stay level and, you know, remember, you know, who we are and, and what we are. And, and if we win, great. We don't get carried away. But if we lose, it's not like we need to go and, you know, jump off a bridge or anything. It's, it's, it's football. It's... It's what happens, you win games, you, you lose games. I think the most important thing is that you're performing well and, and that your processes are working and the, the environment's right and the culture's right and the attitude's right. And then if you are, then the quality in the end uh, wins through and, and you know that's what we've got to do. And I think when, it's, uh, when you have a few more challenges in terms of you maybe don't win as many games as you want for a, for a little period, that's when it, all them things get challenged and you've got to stick together and, and come through it. You know, we had a difficult period at the start of the season. Um, you know, with the first four games, only winning one of them, and we came through that really well. And you know, I'd expect the same um, this time. But it's difficult because every team wants to beat us. Uh, every team's eleven against eleven, and and there's no divine right to to win games, as as we know. So um, yeah, we just have to stay level and, and keep believing what we are and, and keep working hard. And in January, we completed the signings of Yanulis and Needham. Uh, what can you tell us about the recruiting of, of those players? What they can bring to this team and how they're settling in, in at the moment? Yeah, so both have settled in well. Obviously, uh, Nyland's uh, injured at the moment, and obviously we knew that before before we before we signed him. But you know, he's someone that we've been uh, Kieran Scott, who's, who's obviously our head of recruitment and the team have identified him for a long time now. We were watching him when he was at Ingolstadt before he went to Villa. Um, you know, and we think he's a fantastic goalkeeper, certainly for the way we we play. So he can become a real uh, in time. Hopefully, add some real depth to to the goalkeeping department. So we're, we're happy with him. Great guy. Typical what you'd expect from someone from Scandinavia, you know, in terms of professionalism and, and stuff. So he'll bring a lot to the group. And Janulis, again, you know, credit to, to Kieran and the team that, you know, again, a player we identified, you know, a long time ago and they've they've kept on him. And, you know, the deal sort of came alive to us in December, really, where we, where we never thought it was going to be possible. But I think that shows great in terms of the mentality that, that Kieran and the guys have there of being relentless in their work and in their pursuit of trying to find players that can improve us. Because for us in January, what was important, not just to add players for the sake of it, because that, that's easy. It was about adding players who, who ultimately make the, the group um, a lot better. And uh, we think we've got that in, in the pair of them. So I'm really happy with the work uh, that the guys have done. Um, you know, now it's about them settling in. And, and that's where people like Phil Lifko and the rest of the staff sort of come in to get into their own and making sure that off the pitch everything's right, which is obviously in these times quite difficult because you know, it's really hard to immerse themselves in the area and, and the environment, which we know that they'll enjoy once they can. Um, but, you know, making what we can in terms of the car and the house as best as it can be uh, to help them hopefully perform as quickly as possible on the pitch. So you're scouting those guys well in advance of signing them. How, how much of an impact is Brexit going to make on, on football signings? Do you think it's, it could make things perhaps more difficult in, in certain markets? Um, but do you think that ability to be versatile and adapt to new rules is a strength of yourself and your recruitment team here? Yeah, I think it's going to change uh, recruitment um, forever, probably. Um, and you've got, you got two options. You can either look at all of the problems uh, that it's created, because it's created a lot, or you can look at all the opportunities it's created, which is also a lot. And I think, you know, part of our mentality 
in the whole club. Uh, but certainly when it goes down to the recruitment department is, you know, we've got to look at places where other people don't look. We've got to be quicker than than other people because we can't compete on just finances. So we have to we have to be sort of smarter and we have to be quicker and we have to be more aggressive. And, you know, we've seen Brexit coming down the road, obviously, for a few years. It's not a it didn't just happen on the 31st of December. It's been it's been coming for quite a while, you know, and we've planned accordingly within the recruitment department, but also within the investment in the academy and in the infrastructure and and the time and effort we put in to producing our own players because we knew that they'd become a, a premium and a need to produce your own players. So that's why four years ago we, we made that call to invest as heavily as we have done in the academy. But then also within the recruitment of um, setting off in certain projects around Asia um, and South America, in preparation for if the rules changed in the direction we expected, which they have, uh, that we could be prepared uh, to give it our best shot. And, and that's what we've tried to do. doesn't mean it'll work, doesn't mean we'll be any better. But, you know, you sort of adapt or you die. And, and that's you know, very much our sort of philosophy. What we can't do is sit here and, and moan or, or make excuses. We've got to find the opportunities in it and, and maybe let other people moan and, and make excuses while we're maybe, you know, trying to do some work and gain an advantage out of it. It's similar to the last time that we spoke on YouTube, which was after the relegation in um, July. And you said your job then was to get your head around the situation and, and get on with it. So that's the same approach we've got here with those new rules, I suppose. Yeah, it has to be. You know, like I say, I think in life you, you adapt or die. And, you know, it's like the COVID situation. You've you got two options. You, you sit at home and, you know, just eat and put on about four stone or you take the advantages of traveling less and go, right, I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to spend more time with family. I'm going to get to know my, my son better or my wife better or whatever it is. And I think it's like everything in life. It's about the, the mindset that you approach a situation with, because if you want to just find the bad in stuff, that, that, that's really easy. I think it's finding the opportunities in it, which is, which is, uh, which is harder, but what we need to do and, and fair play so far, uh, the staff are doing that really well. Yeah, all clubs obviously would have had to adapt to the challenges presented by COVID. Uh, we managed to avoid having any cases here for a while, but when they did come, how pleased were you with the way that it was prepared for and dealt with and how we responded to that? Yeah, really pleased. You know, Johnny Martin and, and Greg Pillinger, sort of our COVID leads, if you like, um, you know, they've set up robust sort of practices for when this day would come, you know, because this day was always going to come. Um, you know, I'd challenge anyone who has gone through life and not been affected in in some shape or form by it. So it was always going to sort of get here. Uh, after that Christmas period, the whole country was always going to be at risk of um, the of it spiking. And that meant that we were at risk of it spiking and football was at risk of it spiking. And, and, and that's what happened. We had some cases here, but, you know, we've got a top class doctor who's dealt with it brilliantly throughout and stayed calm throughout and stayed, you know, very much focused on the sort of job in hand. And, and when something happens, it's about your sort of processes coming to the fore. and. And, you know, when we had the challenges, you know, we, we sat down as a group and spoke about, we knew this was coming. Now it's to work out, are our processes right or, or not? And, you know, it's like, I think, is it Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. That was the same for us. We had a plan and then it, we had the, the punch in the face and it's about dealing with that. And touch wood, we, we seem to have got through it. Uh, luckily, everyone's come through it from a health point of view. You know, Tim obviously got caught quite bad with it and, and, and was ill for, for a few days, and but luckily he's come through it now and, and is back playing and, and back feeling uh, feeling good. Um, and the others, you know, had you know sort of mild symptoms, you know, similar to what you'd have with a cold or, or a mild flu. And you know, it is what it is. We're going to have to learn to live with this probably for years now. It's, I don't think it's going to just suddenly disappear. Um, but it's about you know learn to deal with it and then not when it does happen, don't, don't panic. It's, it's it's all right. Let's you know let's work through it. Um, and that's what we've done. And you know, really proud of all the staff and all of the players because. Like everyone in life, they've had to make a lot of sacrifices um, to keep the environment as safe as possible. Because we, you know, they, they don't have the option of just sitting at home uh, during this period. You know, we can't furlough, you know, Timu Puki, for example. You know, he's someone with a young child at home who has to take all the precautions he can to make sure that his teammates and staff are safe here. And you know, credit to all of the players and staff for the responsibility that they've shown during this period. In the stadium, we've shown that we can welcome 1,000, 2,000 fans back when it's safe to do so. And I'm sure that you're hopeful that we can get as many of those back as soon as, as, as we can, especially should we be in the Premier League next season. Um, the figures show how important that home for, um, fan support is. And we saw that in Project Restart here as well. Yeah, I think, let's be honest, football, well, not just football, I think any sport without fans is, 
it's just not the same. Um, you know, it, it, it's about, you know, let's be honest, it's an entertainment business. And I know it's been great for people to watch so much football on TV. So at least it's kept people entertained at home. So 100 percent getting it going back in March um, or May or whenever we restarted Project Restart um, was the right decision because I think it's brought a lot of happiness to people that if nothing else in their lives they can put football matches on at night and there's been more free to air available and like the cricket's been free to air in India this week you know which is important because sport is is massive for people just to have something in their lives um, but you know for proper football fans who go to football or football players who play in front of crowds and not having them is is horrible and and we need to get fans back as quickly as we as we can and as as, as soon as it's safe not for Norwich City, but for football in general, whether that's your Kings Lynn, whether you're Ipswich Town, whether you're Norwich City, it's, it's actually irrelevant. You know, every club needs their supporters back because most importantly, them supporters need to be back because for lots of football fans, the highlight of their week is going to watch their team play. Um, their community is watching their team play, stood next to the man or woman that they stand next to every other Saturday afternoon and have a pint with or have a moan with or whatever, or maybe it's uh, going to the pub before the game or after the game, or maybe it's meeting up with their with their mum or dad for once every two weeks to go and watch football. And it's that sense of community which is being lost, um, which we've got to get back more so than atmosphere and stuff like that, because I think that's, we all know that how, you know, that's what football's about. But I think it's uh, for the people who come and watch that sense of community, we, you know, as a whole country, we've got to try and get back get back as quickly as possible because, you know, that'll cost, in my opinion, as many lives as what COVID costs, you know, is, uh, you know, people who will, uh, who will die of loneliness and we've got to try and avoid that if we can. Absolutely, the sooner the better. Um, just changing subject onto the loan system. Um, we're seeing the likes of Sam McCallum, Dan Sanani, Aidan Fitzpatrick, Tyrese Omatori, Archie Mayer, all sort of learning and, and growing from kind of scrapping at the lower end of their respective divisions uh, this season. Do you think that's a, as good for their development as being at the top end and winning the trophies? Yeah, I think um, you know, we're huge believers in the, in the loan programme. You know, we're very fortunate of Neil Adams, who, who runs it for us, who we all know is outstanding at his job. And if you look at over the last few years, the Murphys, um, James Madison, Todd Campwell, um, even Kenny McLean have all all had loan experience and and it's done them the world of good and you know we're big believers if they can't go directly into to the first team um, then let's get them experience out on loan we sacrifice a lot in terms of under 23s and under 18 results because of because of our philosophy uh, but we think we win through then in the end of you know players coming back and if you remember Ben Godfrey's journey you know, he went and played 54 games on loan at Shrewsbury came back got in the first team and you know the rest is um, the rest is history for him uh, you know, same with for Todd. He went away to the Dutch second division, played, got promoted there, come back, got in the team, and again, the rest is history. So it's a really important part of of, of all of their journeys um, because you know whether it's off the pitch development, whether it's on the pitch development, whether you're Archie playing and getting beaten up every week because you're know, a big goalkeeper and they're chucking crosses on top of you, whether it's Tyrese who turned up late for a uh, meeting last week and that meant he was dropped out of the team. He's got to learn that he's 18. He's got to learn that you know what if you don't turn up for a meeting, you get you, guess what? There's a there's a there's a consequence to that. We can't give him that experience. You know that that's real life experience on the job, um, and that's what these young guys are. They you know they're young, they're young men who are learning to be the best professionals they can be, and they need to go and make mistakes, whether that's on the pitch. You know Archie giving away a penalty or Sanani missing an open goal or Tyrese missing a header or something. They have to experience that. That's how you. That's how you get better. That's how you. That's how you learn. You know, Sam McCallum a couple of weeks ago gives away a penalty. You know, and I went to his game on Saturday against Watford to see how he reacted. And he's playing against the the winger there, Saar, who obviously cost forty million. And his reaction was brilliant. He gives Saar nothing, and that's what we want to see. Did you learn from the previous week where you've given a penalty away, or do you crumble? Um, you know, suddenly you're live on Sky, playing against one of the best players in the league. Um, how do you react to it? And and you know, we get so much uh, from that. Obviously, Neil keeps in contact with them every week. You know, Neil and I had Zoom calls with them uh, sort of midway through the season to, to discuss their progress. Daniel is fully informed of how they're doing all the time and, and the staff. So it's it's a big part of what we do. Um, you know, we, we don't loan them just for the sake of it. It's part of their footballing journey. And the philosophy of, of backing young players it is clear to see here for the, for the players who are here as well. The likes of Josh Martin and, and Barley Mumba when he came on and made a really impressive debut at home to Swansea. What have you made of their progress? Yeah, brilliant. You know, I think credit goes to to the boys first and foremost. 
um, because we can only take them to the door. They have to walk through it. Um, and then credit to Daniel, you know, we're very, very lucky here at this club that we've got a, a head coach who, first of all, believes in young players um, and secondly, pushes them so hard to, to try and achieve their uh, to, to achieve their potential. And, you know, and that's a key ingredient. You know, when I came to the club four years ago and Daniel, you know, we spoke about the academy must have good players in because the amount of investment has gone on. But we needed to build a bridge and, and that's what we've done. Um, but it only works when a the player then when he gets his chance, takes it. We can't do that bit, that, that, that's then up to them and all the academy staff can do and the likes of Steve Weaver, Dave Wright, is prepare them for that moment. Um, and then it's up to them and then it's, you know, and then it's for Daniel to keep pushing them to, to push on and, and get even better. But I think, you know, they're very lucky that they've got a head coach who understands young players, he understands development, all the staff do. So you'll also understand that they can have a bad game or they can have a bad training week or they can make a mistake off the pitch. Um, that's part of, part of the journey. And us as a club, we've tried to be robust in the support that we give our young players because it's a, it's a key part of our uh, model. And um, you, you often find if you trust young players or young people, very rarely do they let you down. Um, you've just got to you just got to trust them and, get, and give them that opportunity and back them. And just finally, you, you previously mentioned that this season was about taking actions and, and not dwelling on the past. I, I imagine people outside of the club might be a bit surprised to see Norwich be top of the league after relegation. We see how the other re relegated clubs have done so far this season. Um, what does that say to you about about Daniel, the coaching staff, and the players that work here that we are in the, the position we're at at this stage? Yeah, I'm not particularly surprised. You know, I think. Um, we knew, well, we know with Daniel that we've got, you know, a top, top uh, manager who will go and be a head coach um, in the Champions League one day. I've, I've, I've always said that and, and nothing's going to ever change my mind on that. Um, I think in terms of the players, you know, we were, I think, quite smart of getting our recruitment done early, getting that group together as quickly as possible. You know, we, um, we brought in some big characters, you know, whether that's a Jordan Hugel, Kieran Dowell. Ben Gibson, you know, we, that was part of what we wanted is, you know, we've got to get rid of this, uh, this feeling that we've had of losing games and, and getting relegated. We've got no time to sulk and, uh, and we did have no time to sulk, you know, mistakes were made. You know, we held our hands up for them, um, but it was about then how we react and not dwelling on them. And, and it's, it's always looking forward. There's no point looking back. You've got to learn from what's happened. Absolutely. And you've got to analyse it, uh, but then you've got to get on with it. You know, it's a bit like, you know, we lost a game on Friday night at Swansea. There's no point dwelling on that all this week. We've got Stoke City to prepare for and then another two games quickly following that. So it's about looking forward. Yes, realising why did it not go right? Okay, let's dust ourselves off and let's go again rather than sitting around moping or, or trying, to, to, trying to blame people. And I think huge credit to Daniel, huge credit to his staff because there's a big staff here. Uh, everyone's got their head down, got on with it. Um, and a uh, huge credit to the players who, who they're the ones who go on the pitch and, and have to deliver week in, week out. And, you know, in general, they, they've done that really really well and we're, we're very uh, very proud of them very grateful to them uh, that they've done that and you know hopefully now they get what they deserve out of this season um, which is obviously where we want to get to is, is being promoted because I think um, you know the way the players and staff have adapted they deserve that you know we just got to keep working hard um, and, and fight in every single game and, and uh, I think they've already proven uh, to ourselves that we're good enough to do it now we just got to go and uh, make sure we can finish it off.